Welcome, Horlids, to another Game Horror production. I am proud to present to you Candle. It's a dynamic graphic adventure brought to you by Dalek Entertainment, one of the greatest adventure game companies of the modern era. Let's start Candle. Legend tells us that the gods created and destroyed the world four times. Damn! Some shitty gods. A ray of light beamed down from the sky and struck the earth. From it flowed water, spilling out over the mountains and plains. With it, life was born. After their intervention, the gods observed how this life expanded. Patiently, they watched its evolution and development. Trees spread over the arid earth, and the sky, previously grey and roiled by endless storms, turned calm. Time passed, and the ephemeral creatures that inhabited the world evolved. Intelligence and consciousness emerged. Some of the beings started to speak to their creators. They thanked them for having given their lives meaning, for things worth striving, and for dreams. With all this, something marvelous came into being civilization. The different peoples multiplied and flourished in harmony, sharing knowledge and becoming wiser and wiser. The gods contemplated all of this with satisfaction. But then, something happened. These creatures, who had come so far, were invaded by ambition and greed. All the knowledge accumulated over centuries, all the advances, were now being used by some to dominate others. That's when the violence started. Wars broke out like a great storm devastating everything in its path. Everything that these beings had achieved evaporated. The gods were furious. A great firestorm raised the earth and burned down its forests. The water that emanated from the mountains evaporated. The peoples were condemned and all intelligent creatures vanished in the flames. Then the gods decided to try again. As the teachings of his master flooded his mind, Teku opened his eyes. In front of him he saw all the stars in the firmament. Suddenly he heard a fire crackling nearby. The last thing he remembered were the voices of alarm. His home was being attacked. Then he staggered to his feet. There was no time to lose. Tiku! All right, so I've chosen to play this with the an Xbox controller as opposed to using the keyboard. It is an action-y type of game. Action-adventure. This is just the tutorial. You can see the inventory screen, your map, all your actions. It's pretty basic. The torch broke from a post in one of the village's cabins. 
but can still be used to carry fire with it. Yay. Teko couldn't go on. It was too dark. No! That poor man told Teku what happened. The tribe of the Wakcha had attacked the village and captured prisoners. One of them was Yaka, the tribe's shaman. He had to do something. Love the art in this. This animated cartoon comic style. Oh no, a watch a warrior. And there's an enemy nearby. Teku will walk stealthily to not make any noise. Do not jump or run near an enemy. Get out of the cabin quickly. What happens if we disobey that? Oh shit! <laughs> Get your ass kicked, that's what. Ow! Ow! <laughs> okay, let's put our cat candle out. Send that bitch packing. Off to the swamp. Before going into the forest, Teku looked back one last time. His village, once full of life, was now an immense flame that reared up against the darkness of the night sky. The few survivors left Wave goodbye to Teku in a small gesture of hope. The tears streamed down their masks as they thought about all that had been lost. But there was no time to lose. He was determined to find Yaka and the rest of his men. After all, a light guide must never abandon its shaman. Matter what. After three hours of crossing the forest, as he followed the trail of the Wakchas, the first rays of sun started to filter through the branches of the trees. 
When he emerged from the thicket, Teku stopped at the foot of a cliff. The captor's trail ended there. There was a large marsh down below, and a few bonfires dotted the landscape. It could be them. Teku leaned out over the abyss, trying to figure out the best way of getting down. Jump! Without realizing that the ground he was walking on was giving way under his feet. Oh shit, see you, Teku! His adventure you clumsy was about root. to begin. The fuck is Teku, a root with a wood head? Wake up, Teku! Come on! Teku is free. Taku, puss that son bitch. That a boy. Empty jar. A very old ceramic jar, nicely decorated. It was partially broken, but it could still be used to carry some fluid. It had a golden color, just like the honey. Frog! Oh shit! Fucking frog! Fucking onion head Kermit! Fucking ate my little Tiku root. Stick looks loose. Teku observed the gigantic carved rock. It appeared to be an effigy of a powerful toad. It must represent somebody important. Nevertheless, the wooden structure didn't seem very stable.
huh? Deku, you killed my Deku. Get the way out of the way of that stone, obviously. Oh fuck, Tiku! I wanted to see him get impaled on those sticks. And they take the ladder away. Teku observed the gigantic Gotta run as soon as I do it. I know. Can't use the ledge here. press up against the wall without getting the back of my fucking wooden head dropped in. Wow, 
Wow, that was too easy. I'm not good at easy puzzles, only hard ones. A cutting rock. It was carved and ready to slice like a knife. It was not very useful as a weapon, but this rock was a perfect tool for any novice adventurer. Taku wouldn't get rid of it during his journey, as he would, would need to use it many times. up some door. A strange mechanism seemed to be controlling the water coming out of the enormous gourd. And Teku remembered having seen that symbol before. All right, we have uh, some windmill things. Tree water fire. Water, fire, fire. We need to match the uh, top of that statue there. Water, fire, fire. Shakalaka, welcome to the candle get out. We're making it rain.
Oh, fuck, Tico! <laughs> you poor little root motherfucker. Finally, some flamage. It was a Wakja warrior. But unfortunately, there was no trace of the shaman. It's possible that the main group had gone on ahead. He had to be careful. They were very dangerous. A dick is dangerous. Better run, you little shit. It looks like we unblocked the ladder openings there. me some rope it was all scratched and dirty it was just a piece of rope someone forgot so it couldn't be used to reach very distant places it's shitty rope Female shaman figurine. A small figurine carved in the wood and shaped as a shaman. Its arms are articulated and could be moved to three different positions. Judging from the shape of its base, it must fit in somewhere. a dart. These darts are commonly used by all tribes to hunt small animals. They are covered in lethal poison It made them very dangerous. Some kind of weapon was needed to use it. Probably a fucking blowgun. immediately recognized the man who was asking for help. It was one of the bodyguards of Yaka, his tribe shaman. He had to help him, but how could he get to him? He had heard stories about those platforms. The ancients used them to travel rapidly to distant places, but to use it he needed his candle to be burning. Hey. Hey. 
Hey. Holy shit, it's a killer bunny! <laughs> Is that a bunny or a fucking rat? The bunny wants some honey! We gotta get the bunny some honey. Hey. Knife. Rope. Hey. Empty jar. Shame and shit. Dart. Nothing. Fuck you. Is that guy fucking mental? All right, folks, that wraps it up for this episode of Candle. Stay tuned for more Candle soon to come.